Hello, this is Greg French. Uh, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be covering Chapter 5, Part 3 in our A-plus uh, computer repair series, uh, CPUs and chipsets. The chipset, a uh, set of chips on the motherboard, uh, controls the memory cache in uh, external buses and peripherals. Uh, Intel dominates the market for the chipsets. Reason they dominate, they also dominate uh, the CPUs or the processors, and they've also gotten into the motherboard manufacturing, and consequently have uh, kind of a domination now of the chipsets. Example is the i800 series of chipsets, some of their newer ones, Intel 800. Uh, they're also in the 900s now. Uh, series accelerated hub architecture. All I/O buses uh, connect to a hub interface. The hub connects uh, to the system bus. Northbridge uh, contains graphics and the memory controller. I'm going to talk more about the Northbridge. Very important chip. Uh, that's really what uh, determines the performance uh, for your computer because it uh, will maintain the bus speed that uh, the CPU runs at. Also, it connects both the RAM and the video uh, card to the CPU. Uh, the faster we can get the RAM to run, the better the performance of the computer and we don't want a bottleneck on the video side so we need to be able to run data in and out of our video card very very quickly. The South Bridge, that will take care of everything else uh, hard drives, uh, keyboard, mice, uh, the PCI slots from the motherboard, everything else. Uh, here's a good diagram showing the CPU at the top up here. Here we have our system bus which connects to our North Bridge now the north bridge is also called uh, the memory uh, controller or hub. And then we also have the south bridge down here, which is called the I.O. Uh, controller, and it connects uh, your motherboard uh, PCI buses uh, and uh, hard drives, USB, everything else. But then up here, your north bridge, this is what connects the RAM and uh, your video card. This is, this is really the, the heart of the performance of your computer. We need a good CPU fast bus speed, fast memory, and a fast video card. Heat sinks and controlling fans. The controlling assembly should keep the temperatures less than 185 degrees Fahrenheit, which would be very warm. Target temperatures range only from about 90 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. One or more fans are usually needed uh, to meet these cooling needs. You'll have a fan directly on top of the CPU, but you'll also have a case fan that will help pull uh, that hot air out of the case. Cooling fan sits on top of the processor uh, with a wire or clip. Heat sink, uh, clip on device pulling the heat directly from the processor. Heat sinks generally have some kind of uh, material that helps to transfer that heat directly from the processor to the heat sink. Sometimes it's a paste. Uh, the paste has a silver powder in it and the silver is a very, con very good conductor of heat. Uh, cooler, a combination of heat sink and cooling fan, uh, depending on the processor and depending on maybe if you're going to overclock, uh, these can get quite elaborate. They do have uh, liquid cooling devices that can really bring the temperature down quite a bit on these on these CPUs. Gets a little expensive though for a, uh, for an overclocking type of uh, heat heat transfer. Uh, here is the older slot one. Uh, you can see the big heat sink right here, and then the fan, the ha fan will help uh, blow the heat off the heat sink away from the CPU and get the CPU down as far as temperature. Processor uh, controlling the fan mounts on top of the side or the side of the processor housing and is powered by an electrical connection on the motherboard. Today uh, even the power for the fan here is controlled uh, by the computer depending on the temperature so the fan is, uh, is regulated in speed. Installing a processor. Types of installation. Technicians are asked to perform assembly a PC from parts, exchange a processor that is faulty or maybe upgrade, add a second processor to a dual processing system or upgrade an existing processor to improve the performance. Uh, motherboard and documentation uh, lists uh, suitability of these processors. So you need, always need to look at the motherboard to see what CPUs or processors that uh, it, can, it, can, it can handle. Uh, some processor features to consider, uh, looking at core frequency is always very important, also your bus speed. Bus speed is really an overriding factor of even the core frequencies. The faster the bus speed, the faster we get that data in and out of the CPU. 
Uh, multiprocessing capabilities, very important. And also an appropriate cooler. Voltage to the processor. Earlier processors drew power from the system bus lines. Uh, the newer motherboards uh, may have a power connector, and they all, they all generally do now. There's a 12-volt connector uh, that connects uh, to the motherboard uh, for for power for the CPU. Modern other mo <coughs> excuse me, modern motherboards relegate voltage in the socket. Uh, sockets were more universal for older processors. Processor may fit the socket but not get a correct voltage. Ensure that the motherboard supports the older processors. Dual voltage processors, voltages for internal and external operations differ. And all the processors today have dual voltages. We have one voltage, which is our external voltage, which allows it to interact with the rest of the computer. But the internal voltages on the processor are extremely low today. Uh, as the processor gets um, more and more transistors, they've come up with newer types of uh, processing or creation of these processors, which makes them smaller and smaller. The advantages uh, as they reduce the size is the voltages get smaller. So there's less heat. Uh, huge advantage. So we can make these processors extremely small today. Single voltage processor requires only one voltage. That would be a fairly old technology to have a single voltage. Uh, here's that connection. You see uh, right back here we've got a yellow and a black wire. The yellow is our 12 volt. Black would be the return. And this is uh, the newer type Pentium 4, but all, all the newer processors today have this extra connection. Uh, auxiliary 4-pin power cord from the power supply could be the uh, XL volt on the board. Uh, CPU voltage regulator. Uh, voltages could be set on some older motherboards, enabling motherboards to support various types of CPUs and voltages. Ways to configure the voltage on the older motherboards was jumpers generally. Uh, uses a voltage regulator, uh, VRM, uh, can be embedded or installed with upgrades. In review, uh, chipsets again. Uh, chipsets have improved considerably as the CPUs improve. We have to come up with newer chipsets. Uh, Intel is still has the uh, uh, memory controller in the North Bridge. Uh, they like to keep it in the North Bridge. That allows them to have a little more flexibility on the type of uh, memory that can be added uh, to, the, uh, to the motherboard. Uh, again, the performance uh, of the computer really stands on that north bridge. We need to be able to have a fast uh, front side bus to the CPU, and it has to be able to support fast memory and a fast video card. Cooling, heat sinks and fans, very important, especially if we're going to over, over clock a CPU. Uh, there's some really fancy types of uh, cooling that can be done to really get the temperature down. Uh, installing uh, and installation of the CPUs, uh, very critical. Uh, especially with the new LAN grid array, it's easy to damage either the chip or the motherboard. And then the voltages. Uh, we talked a little bit about the voltages uh, since the Pentium 4. There is a newer plug that now is that is plugged into the motherboard to allow the voltages for the CPU. And that has two yellow and two black uh, wires uh, providing 12 volts. Activities. I want you to research the chipsets. Uh, I also want you to diagram those connections and operations and be able to discuss. You need to be able to kind of diagram this architecture, CPU chipsets, uh, North Bridge, South Bridge, what connects to them. Uh, if you can diagram that and explain that, uh, that's pretty important to, so that you understand how a computer works and the importance of those chipsets. Uh, Lab 5.4 chipsets. Uh, I'm going to be able to do a little of this diagramming and understand a little bit more. Uh, also, we have a quiz, uh, CPU and chipsets. Uh, you'll find that on exam if you want you to complete. Uh, that's it for now. Uh, thank you very much.